gamers all around the universe today how to stop the unstoppable i am the stoppable force versus the unstoppable force that is the bbq aka the barbican rush okay i've seen posts i've seen questions in the chat beastie barbican rush is okay how do i stop it i'm about to teach you kid it's very easy barbican rush sucks okay it sucks now um, I just played this game fresh out of the oven if you're watching on YouTube um, I'm playing against Chinese obviously for the Barbican Rush and I am HRE and it's actually perfect because I'm HRE which most people Especially in low levels think HRE sucks. So my point is if I can defend this with HRE you can defend it with anything All right, that's how it really do be like that. So um, I'm not gonna bother with my build. This is not uh, my build order uh, guide or whatever we're gonna focus on the barbecue rush and how to defend it and how to deflect it. Okay, that's how we're gonna do go about it. I'm gonna give you guys tips on what to do, um, main things to focus on, things to be careful about, and um, yeah. Um, also, it, it's kind of like worst case scenario for me as well because I put chapel in the front, so like. This is possibly the worst case scenario for me, actually. I don't think there's a worse scenario because my wood line's in the front, my gold is in the front, and my bear is in the front, and my chapel is in the front. So this is like worst sieve, worst position defending against BBQ Rush, okay? So it cannot get worse for this for me. And like, if I had resources in the back, that's a lot easier, right? So then you could say like, well, resources in the back, even if the BBQ rush, then it's not that big of a deal. By the way, it's a barbecue rush, but people call it BBQ rush. Because it's barbecue, bar barbecue, you know? So here we go. He comes in here and a lot of people, what they do is they pull the workers. They're like, oh shit, dude, I'm getting all, uh, I'm getting rushed. I should pull all my workers. The way you defend barbecue rush, is by doing nothing. Just continue playing your game. It works though? Well, not according to a lot of people. Uh, if it did work, people wouldn't be asking how to defend it, okay? So how to defend Barbican Rush? You actually don't defend it. You just let him, you just, you just let him build towers, you know? So, here we go. I'm gathering gold, and when Barbican is near completing, I'm just gonna move my workers. I don't need gold, because now the game has changed. So whatever plan you had, right? If you wanted to rush castle, you can't just continue rushing castle. It's not gonna work, right? You need to get yourself in a position where the towers are not pushing your resources anymore, and then you can continue with your plan, whether that was 2TC or, 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 or castle rush or whatever else, right? So. Very few people react accordingly, because if someone plays HRE, they're like, okay, I need to go on gold here, and I need to go castle. And then you just get towered, and then your workers are running here, then they tower rush you there, and you're not accomplishing anything. So, what I do is, the first thing that I do, I say, okay, these bears are exposed, so the next tower is gonna go, like, either here or there to, defend, to block the food. So, I send all my workers from sheep, to get the berries because they're not going to be available very soon. They're about to be shut down. You know, so you can just get juice, a little bit of extra resources, right? And I start collecting more wood. The number one thing you need to do against Barbican Rush is you need to get an archer range instantly. Instantly. Okay? Someone says bad barbecue placement should have been between uh, berries and gold. Um... Not really. If it was here, then he can't tower the wood because I can just pull the workers. And that's why you're gold. And that's why I'm here to help you. Don't worry about it. Just enjoy the stream and uh, sit tight in the chat. Anyway, because in order to bar barbecue rush successfully, you need to tower the wood. Okay? If he towers the berries... What? Just sit down and listen. This is a class, okay? Professor Cutie's on the case. So anyway, uh, tip for barbecue rushes out there. You need to tower the wood lines. That's how you win. Okay, now how do we deal against rushing the wood lines? We need to get wood to build an archer range. Why don't we build a barracks? Well, because it sucks. The units are melee, and a good tower rusher will make a tower here, 
in range of Barbican, then it will make a tower here. So basically the tower will always be able to hit your melee units. And archers obviously have a, a range on it, right? So you can pick off vi villagers while they're trying to build. Horsemen also suck. They're a better version of like spearmen or men at arms, but they suck because Chinese towers and Chinese barbican, which is the only barbican there is in the game, they don't shoot arrows like other towers. They shoot like the cannonballs and those balls are very good against armored units. So making men at arms ain't gonna defend this or making scouts because they're gonna do quite a bit of damage. So what you want to do, number one prio, <clears throat> when you notice it's happening, you need to be like, okay, I'm not taking up. I'm not going second TC. I need to get archer range so I can prevent further tower rushing. You ignore the towers themselves. Don't try to kill towers. Just let them be, okay? Just let them be. Don't try to kill the towers. That's the bait. That's what the, the tower rusher wants you to do. He wants you to attack the towers because then you lose villagers. His villager count is increasing and you're slowly bleeding out in the game. And you're dying. So... What is my goal? This is a forfeit, like, to be clear. This is a forfeit. I'm not trying to defend this at all. I, I'm giving this up, right? That's the mistake a lot of people do. They're like, okay, how do I defend this woodland? You can't, it's gone. Like, it's already gone. You got no units, and there, he's building a tower. It's gone. So, I'm trying to get wood, and I'm gonna build Archer Ranger on this side, because I'm gonna try to defend this side of the map, right? Why this side? Well, I need wood, and I know that he's gonna go that way because that's what you're supposed to do when you do the BBQ tower rush. Once you establish your wood line, you wanna establish your food line and then your gold, right? So I think in general, the best way to deal with this is go archer range into castle and then make a trebuchet. You can also go for um, just a bunch of units and make a ram or two. The problem with ram is if the Chinese player does a couple of towers and then decides to go fast castle and you decide to go rams, you will be age behind and you will die to men at arms. Which is why I personally prefer to go castle and get a trebuchet out. Because not only you get trebuchet, which is range, the rams won't be, you know, rams take damage against towers, they can get attacked by horsemen. Trebuchet is going to be pretty safe and you have access to castle. You know, you can start picking up relics, uh, because usually the opponent won't have units. You can, you know, get the H3 landmarks, which are really good for most civs. Uh, you can get crossbows if they go men at arms. So there's plenty of options the castle opens. While if you go for rams, which is, I feel like, in a way, like a noob bait, unless you're Abbasid, um, the rams delay your tech by quite a lot. So if you're Abbasid, I would suggest busting out with rams because they don't need siege engineering research and you can get them like this. So with Abbasid, you would make an archer range, make like five, six archers, get a ram, and start working on the towers. But with other civs, like, I, I would honestly just suggest getting castle and then getting a trebuchet while controlling the towers. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. He makes a tower here. I pull the workers, I run away, and I get an archer range. I start uh, chopping the wood. Also, don't be afraid to chop like the uh, the straggler wood if you don't have wood. That's also fine. He's towering the berries next, right? He successfully has denied this. He's not towering more here because he saw that I moved away the workers. If I built a lumber camp here, he would just go around and tower here, right? So what I do is I just go to the other wood line because now he can't build this tower here. That's not how it works because I can just pull villagers and kill it. He has to build a tower here, then he has to build a tower here, then he has to build a tower here. And that's quite a bit of time that you're buying yourself by simply moving your workers. So, again, I'm on berries because I'm trying to get that extra resources. And you're basically forcing your opponent at the same time to make something there, which I don't really care about. Like, food is not my focus. So he's making a tower here. I get the food out and I just bail onto the sheep that I have here. Archers start coming out. <clears throat> Um, and I'm going to build the lumber camp here. One thing to note, because now, look from my point of view, so I'm going to show you a little bit from my point of view what this looks like. So right now, I saw the workers going that way, right? But I don't know if he has all the workers there or some workers there. You can see he has workers here, but I don't know if these workers are building something on this side. I don't want to get surrounded. So what I like to do is I get a second scout, and I'm going to put that second scout in this forest, so I can see if the workers are trying to tower rush from this side. 
Because otherwise, if there's no workers here, then all these resources are free for me, right? If there's no towers, I can just go there. So what I do now is I'm going to move this scout, I think, north to make sure I know where the towers are going up. And I'm going to use the archers to delay slash kill workers that are trying to set up the towers. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm going to show from my POV right now. I didn't know that he was mining stone here. So I see five workers. And what do I do? I try to pick off the workers. Am I pulling workers to kill the tower? No, just let him build it. He goes inside. I move back. I damage the worker. You know, we did some hull damage. And we'll continue to do that. Second scout is going on the other side to make sure I have vision. And he continues to tower rush on this side. And this is what I was talking about. He needs to make this kind of leap in order to connect the towers. Otherwise, I can just pull villagers and destroy the tower. So, what is my goal from here? You can see my food is going up. Um, and as an HRE, I wanted to go to castle uh, and defend this with a trebuchet because I'll get the relics. Uh, I'll get access to men at arms, which I'll be able to defend any kind of pushes if he does them. And I'll be able to just be in a pretty good position, right? So here we go. I, you know, push the villagers, he cancels the tower. And here I'm trying to find the angle. Obviously, you don't want to attack from here. You want to attack like from this side, try to pick up workers and delay his push. So here I get a little worker. Again, delaying the tower. My wood chopping is going great. His upgrade finished. He does have range, you know, but I'm still doing damage to the workers. I think I'm going to lose one archer here. But that's fine. He lost a worker. Second one's about to die. Third one's pretty low. And this tower rush is becoming weaker and weaker. Because he, he can't build towers super fast. Because he has less workers. So it become easier to deny. And I'm getting more archers. I like to get between 6-7 archers. I think that's a good number to deal with the tower rush. Because you'll be able to two-shot villagers basically. So yeah, that's a good amount. <clears throat> now, I've stopped the progression of towers. Right? He's gonna have harder and harder time pushing the towers. Like, let's say he gets a, a tower here, right? It still doesn't deny the wood chopping. So, what I'm doing is I'm already preparing for the next transition, right? And to me, that's castle. So I find a goal. There's a goal in the bottom. I could have gone, obviously I don't want to go this goal, but I could go this goal all the way here, right? And just start working on gold in order to age up. And my food is about to run out here, so I have two options. I, or three options. I either go on these uh, deer, I either go on these berries, or I go on the deer on the left. You don't want to split up your eco and stuff too much, so I just decide to get my berries here so that my economy is concentrated on this point. So it's easier to defend if an attack comes. <clears throat> here he continues to attempt to tower rush. You know, you just pick off the villagers, you, you know, work on them bit by bit. Another worker goes down. And I think this is where he just gives up. Oh, he makes a tower here to like tower rush this, but it was too close to TC, so he ends up losing um, he ends up losing workers. <clears throat> now I move all my sheep workers down there to try and get this. As you can see, I have too much food. So I was like, okay, in order to age up, I need to get gold. So I think I build this mill and then I move a bunch of workers to gold and quickly get an agent. Now, around this time, when you feel secure enough, you should try to scout on their side of the map what their transition is. Because the towers, he's not going to make thousand towers. There's going to come a point where they try to transition into something, whether it's army, whether it's a feudal all-in or going castle or double TC, you need to know what they're doing. That is very, very important. For now, I can see he's still investing into towers, um, but towers are also not a big investment, right? So if he's making towers, it doesn't mean he's not doing something else. So um, a very usual transition from tower rushing is horsemen. And the reason for that is because people go archers into rams. So if they make horsemen, they counter the archers, and they counter the rams. They can just dive the rams and you lose them, which is another reason why I don't like rams as a response to this. So, I have a horse, I have a scout here, uh, scouting, making sure I don't get towered on, on these resources, because that would be pretty bad. Um, 
And you always want to have scout near your resources where you're gathering, so you can make sure there's no towers coming, okay? That is very important. If you're a bit slower, I mean, I have this one on patrol, but if you're a bit slower, if you don't feel confident, what you can also do is you could build a tower right here, right? Like right here, I have enough wood. You can build a tower and you're gonna get vision of this whole side so that you don't need this scout, right? So that's something that you can play with and uh, and work with. Uh, I saw the uh, scouts here, so I tried to deny them. And yeah, as you see, I'm making no progress towards towers. I'm just defending and I'm just slowly going into castle. If they are going horsemen, if I saw horsemen already, I would throw down a barracks and get some spearmen out to, to defend that. I have a bunch of gold. And I'm about to tech up. Still 9.30 uh, castle while getting tower rush. I, I would say it's pretty decent timing. Um, and here I have my archers because I'm feeling pretty secure. He's not advancing here, so I'm like trying to see if he is tower rushing on this side. You know, just trying to get as much scouting as I can. And I'm already getting my prelates, which is obviously HRE specific to try to pick up relics as fast as I can. And um, in this game, I could have scouted a bit earlier, but I wasn't really worried about uh, about an all-in. Oh, I think I saw the workers here, by the way. I can't go back in the replay, but I think I saw the workers move here and they were moving downwards. So that's why I was trying to, to find it with the archers because the scout missed him. And he made a tower here, but I managed to pick off uh, like two, three workers. And by the way, you have to rem remind yourself that every time you kill a worker, you're actually killing their economy as well. So yeah. Oh yeah, I lost a few workers here to the tower. Um, so what I could have done better in this game is scouted them a bit earlier. But I felt pretty confident that, you know, he is not doing anything to threaten me or whatever. And if you look at his side of the map, he went for the second TC. Which if he didn't, his horsemen would have arrived a bit earlier. In which case you would see them, you would make a tower here or two to secure these resources. And just continue, you know, making a few archers and then spearmen. So, now that I got castle, I'm starting siege workshop. I got plenty of workers on wood. I got some workers on food, some workers on gold. And let me reveal my point of view. I'm going to send a scout from the left side, because I know these workers are on that side. And I saw the horseman right here move out. And I see that he's getting some food here. So these archers right now, they can't really deny anything, right? Because the, the, the towers, I think, are going up here, which are kind of useless, actually. And these two are up, so they're kind of walled off on this side. I would have to send them all the way around to get them back to my base. So don't be afraid to, like, if you see the opponent is mining openly like this or gathering resources, just send your archers to kill his workers, you know? Just deny his mining. The horsemen come in here. They kind of do some damage, but not really. I end up just fighting them with my workers because, you know, I'm HRE, who cares? Um, and Treb, look at that. Two shotting the towers. Amazing. Amazing. And you're just slowly working. If he's repairing, he's wasting so many resources. Uh, I would probably suggest if there's five plus towers going for a second trebuchet. I didn't have resources here, but I would definitely go second treb right now if I did have wood. And slowly just start working on the towers. Here, my archers killed a few villagers. And now I'm just going to the other food sources to try to see where his uh, workers are, because obviously he has to get food somewhere. And I just see a worker here. Look at that. A little cheeky worker. So I'm like, oh, where are you going? And I got more worker damage while my base is pretty much stabilized. He's like bleeding workers left and right. If you look at the worker count, it's 46 versus 36. But mind you, he's on two TCs, but I already have two relics. So... That's pretty good for me. And he's in feudal, by the way. So, you know, there's that too. Uh, so he's pretty delayed tech-wise. Now, once we've established this, what is the best way to go from here, right? A lot of people don't know how to transition. Uh, well, if I was playing a more aggressive Civ, like maybe French or, um, you know, Delhi, I would probably just go with French. I would go Knight Archer and just try to attack my opponent the moment I get rid of these towers. 
if I played a more defensive sim like HRE or maybe even China myself, um, or like Abbasid, uh, I would probably try to establish my economy and, and kind of just keep macroing. Which in this game, I go for Imperial and I just go for um, the printer, aka Palace of Sabia, because I want to get the worker count up and I just want to, you know, win with Imperial, right? Um, but if you're playing a more aggro sim, like I said, you can go Castle and just all in from then on out. That's completely fine. Because the opponent has invested so much into these towers that his tech and everything else is slowed down quite a bit. So as long as you don't bleed out workers, you will be ahead, okay? And one thing that people have to remember, because sometimes people feel like, oh, I'm not like doing anything, my castle is delayed. So is their stuff as well, okay? So is their stuff. Um, if you look, it's, it's 14 minutes and he's not started castle. So that's what you have to have in mind when you're playing these games. If they're investing so much into tower rushing, especially because this build requires you to pull like seven, eight workers with Chinese, those seven, eight workers are running around, building towers, losing mining time. So even if you lose a couple of workers, you're still fine because their workers are kind of inactive. Um, so yeah. Yeah, from here on out, I just clean up the towers one by one. I'm still doing some harassment here on the, on the villagers. Um, I could have also taken a more aggressive approach, by the way, and I could have started making men at arms and sending them across the map. But I was like, you know what, I can just look at my gold income from the relics. So I was like, you know what, I can just go Imperial and not worry about it. Is the other third age up also viable? Uh, it depends on the game. With HRE, both uh, castle age ups are viable. But in this case, uh, I felt that I could take the relics. So I went for the uh, Regnitz Cathedral. If I felt more pressured, like for example, if my opponent was doing a, that's a good question. If my opponent was doing a feudal all in after the tower rushing, I wouldn't go with the Regnets. I would go with the, the Burger Palace, right? Because then I can print out men at arms and I can fight his feudal all in and I can get a trebuchet. But because here he wasn't really pressuring me, I felt confident enough to just go Regnets and get the relics. So. That's kind of the choice you can make with uh, HRE. And the reason why I thought this game is great to show you guys how to defend this is because HRE is the worst sieve, right, to play in Feudal. So I felt like if I show you how to defend with this in, with HRE, you can do much better with other sieves. Like for example, if I played French this game and I got tower rushed, what I would do is I would get a knight and I would just go around and harass his gold line, harass his food, harass whatever, right? And that would make game easier for me because you can harass your opponent while you're getting tower rushed and you can defend it at the same time. And HRE can't really do that. So, yeah. Uh, once you get castle, like I said, the most important thing is get a treb out. Make sure to know if he's like a rushing castle himself. Uh, then you get some crossbows to fight men at arms. If he is rushing, if he's all in in you, make sure you, you know, build more production buildings and actually defend it. Um, and if he is like macroing, going to TC and Song Dynasty, well, you can macro as well. And if you think you're in a good enough position, with HRE specifically, you can go Imperial. But with other civs, I would probably recommend just putting the pressure uh, in Castle. So, yeah. Um, what else is there to say? The most important part I would say about this is just making sure that you are preventing further tower rushing. And what you don't want to happen is have the towers go from here all the way down here and from the other side. Because then you're surrounded and you're very limited in, what resor in terms of what resources you can get. So that's something you want to prevent and that's why you build the, uh, the archers. And that's why the scouts are so important to give you that vision where their opponent is going. But like I said... If you can't use your scouts efficiently to get vision, just build a tower here, right? And then you get the vision of this whole side and see what the opponent is doing. And uh, yeah. Some other sieves, by the way, have the options. Uh, and this is something people do versus Mongol tower rushes, like French. They make scouts from their stables and they destroy the towers with stables. I would recommend against this uh, versus this specific rush because like I said, the Chinese towers don't hit with arrows, they hit with hand cannons, which deal 25 damage a hit. So their damage is a lot higher on units that are higher HP or higher armor. 
because the damage doesn't get really reduced by the ranged armor. So that's something to consider. Um, and yeah, from here on out, I'll just let the game play out so you guys can see. He tries to snipe my trebuchets with a horseman. I'm slowly sniping, and as you can see, you're two-shotting the towers whenever trebuchet actually hits. So it's very easy to clean them up. Once I cleaned up towers on this side, I got these, uh, these deer, I got more food. And basically, whenever you're destroying towers, you're enabling or freeing up resources for yourself. So once I destroy these two towers, the workers are waiting. I'm gonna get on the berries and get those resources. And I go from basically no food at all to in just a little bit. Look at that gold. I had 4k gold from the relics, by the way. I wasn't even mining the gold. But because I wasn't using the gold, it stacked up. So I built a market. I bought a shit ton of food. And I just aged up to Imperial. I destroyed this thing. My scout is in front of his base the whole time, by the way. So I've been seeing that he was building castle. I saw that he has a lot of barracks. He has a lot of barracks with Chinese. He's gonna go man at arms. Um, the safest play would be to just go for like uh, some kind of walls and going crossbows. But because I played HRE and I was going Imperial, I was like, you know what? I'll just make man at arms, Imperial man at arms, and I'll just fight his uh, palace guards. Which is a bit uh, of a riskier play. His palace guards are faster, but uh, I was fine with uh, dealing with that. Here I had some spearmen from fighting the horsemen earlier, some archers, some men-at-arms. He's trying to send palace guards everywhere, but he's kind of just bleeding units at this point. And because I'm HRE and I have Palace of Swabia out, even if I lose workers, it doesn't really matter because he's constantly losing his army. You can see him here die for the trebs. I repaired him. And like I said, he's not really getting a lot of value, right? He's kind of making me multitask a little bit, but nothing too serious. He kills a worker, like, for every five palace guards, which is just not worth, because my man-at-arm mass is just increasing more and more. And these are Imperial man-at-arm. So once I stabilize a bit, I get a little castle or keep here. I start walling off even more. I got a wall here. And at the point I just A-move my uh, man at arms to make him defend. He kills them, but the Palace of Swabia printer in my economy is kind of popping off too much, so it doesn't really matter. I do a full wall. Here he tries to push with four um, sprinklers, but you know, I just dive on them and just kill them. Make a castle. And he taps out. GG. So, the Barbican Rush, your number one prio is stopping the Barbican Rush. Stopping, sorry, stopping the tower progression. You let the Barbican Rush finish. You cannot prevent it. Even if you pull workers, maybe you can prevent it, maybe. But then if you don't and you pulled like 15 workers to deal with it, you ought to lose the game. So it's too risky and you don't need to do it. Get an archery range, prevent further tower rushing, make sure that one side of the map is open, Secure woodline first, then secure food, and then go for the gold. And remember, you don't need to rush defending it. Let the towers do their work. Let the towers shoot as long as you have resource to work with. And if the opponent is not connecting towers, like kind of in, in a line, if he's making a tower behind your woodline and it's not close to anything, just pull 10 workers and just kill the tower. They take 50% extra damage while building, so try to abuse that, okay? Um, other than that, like I said, once you get to castle or if you're Abbasid and you make rams, after that you have so many choices, uh, whether you want to go for aggro, depending on what civ you play, if you want to play more passive, that is up to you. This is just a little guide on how to stop the Barbican Rush from basically covering your whole base with towers and you losing in the end. Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what kind of guide you would like to see next. If you're watching on Twitch, Let's keep laddering.